Hi, it's Julia here and I am back with a new process video. I know, who figured? Um, but it is to share the Dima collection, obviously, that I had so much fun creating. Um, I have another video up on the channel if you want to hear all about the collection, why I created it, what colors and, and all of that. But I just really wanted to share the process of making the um, the stamp stickers because I really like them. So here we go. Um, yeah, so what I did is I, uh, I started with some paper because I generally feel like if you're going to create something with watercolor in mind, because this is a watercolor set, I feel like paper is a really good, good way to start. Yeah, I know I'm trying to be funny here. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm using Fabriano Artistico 100% cotton paper. This paper has quickly become like my favorite kind of paper. I love this paper. Uh, the coloring sheets that I've recently put out uh, are printed on this paper. I just love this paper. Um, all the time before I was like arch that was all I used. Loved arch. I started on, on the rough paper. Um, slowly and painfully graduated to the cold press. Uh, I don't like hot press paper, I'm not, not even going to go there. Um, but yeah, I I love uh, the arch paper and then I tried some Fabriano paper on some course or something and I was like, no, nope, <laughs> no Italian paper for me. Um, but then, you know, I have grown up and I was like, yeah, I should probably try some Fabriano paper. Everybody was saying how good it was. And I was like, no. And then I tried it, um, or specifically I tried this paper and I was like, this is amazing. So yeah, you know, you grow, you develop, you change your mind and all of that. <laughs> so anyway, that is what I'm starting with. Uh, and I knew I wanted to make four different scenes uh, or landscapes, whatever you want to call it. So I just took some masking tape and divided the paper. I didn't, I didn't make any marks or I didn't really uh, measure anything. Probably should have. That's not really me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I sketched out what I wanted, um, and then I used. I used um, some sepia ink from Dalleroni. I really love these inks. I have them uh, in sepia. Oh, they're completely messed up. Yep, that's that's the way it is. Um, but I have them in black and I've used it in black for a very long time and white too. But recently I got um, sepia and Payne's Grey and I really love those colors. They're not as harsh as black, but they still give that sort of impression of having um, a proper outline. So I'm, I'm really having really fun using and um, so the the stamps of the Dima, like the stickers and also the postcard, I use the same sort of technique with that. And on the icon stickers, for those I, I went in with a micron pen because I felt like the lines would be too big compared to the size of what I was painting. So I just used a sepia micron pen in 0.1, I think. Um, and when I had done that and let that dry and then I just went in a bit with masking fluid and I feel like adding some masking fluid because with this piece, um, my my thought was I wanted to go in with like two layers. I want one layer in for the background and then going in with one layer like in the foreground so that it would not be too overworked. It were going to be quite small when I was done with it, you know, for the sticker sheet. Um, and I feel like just adding a little bit of a highlight with that masking fluid can really get good results and quite effectful without a lot of work. I know some people are very hesitant to use masking fluid and um, for different reasons. Some feel like it's messy or they don't have control over it. Other is the smell and I can 100% understand that. The masking fluid I'm using I think is uh, Winsor Newton maybe? Let's see. Sorry, sorry. No, it's Dalleroni. Yeah. And it is, it smells a lot. It smells bad. 
Uh, and I'm very sensitive to the smell and I get migraines from stuff that smells and this is like a struggle but I feel like for me it is worth it um, and it's really I find it very easy to use now I have these little things you use of when you do like sculptures so they have like imagine a brush but instead of the actual hair for a bristle there it's just like a silicone a uh, point in different shapes uh, and I use that or I use uh, a dip pen or a dip nib and that works so so well it's so easy to clean up no mess um, so I highly recommend that but they are different there are different brands and different forms of masking fluid you can use if you are very sensitive to the smell. I mean, they come in pens and more like glue tubes and everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are there are varieties and options. Um, but like I said, I felt like I really wanted uh, this to be quite easy to work with. And I, I like masking fluid, I'm not going to lie. So, <laughs> so here you can see I've gone and painted the hair. Um, and then I'm very happy with how the sky turned out in this like sort of tree tree line where I just wet the paper, let uh, Harald and Ingrid sort of go in together and I really like those two together for the sky because they don't make green, they sort of let each other be and you just get that really nice glow with the, if you dilute Ingrid. But you can also see on the right uh, with the hair you can get Ingrid to be very saturated and get a lot of colour. Um, so yeah, <laughs> also I, I think I've mentioned this in the, uh, in the sort of collection video or where I presented that my favorite mixture is Harald with Albert. So Harald is mostly PB60, so like indenturin blue or delft blue, whatever you want to call it. And that is a very strong, very strong pigment. Uh, and it, it is mostly that color and then I have just used a little bit of PR101 and PV6 so a little bit of um, uh, what do you call it Venetian red English red that kind of pigment and then a little bit of white so I can get a little bit of a dirtier uh, desaturated look because that is what I wanted uh, I feel like PB60 is too too strong and too bold and that is not what I wanted. So anyway, um, but mixing that with Albert that is a burnt sienna, Italian sienna, sorry, a burnt Italian sienna, uh, makes a really nice either brown or you can get it almost to black. It can get really dark and I just love that. Um, so just flagging that uh, mixture because I love that and I've been using that a lot. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I have to say that, uh, you can see me using, I have it in my sort of, um, uh, quote unquote working palette where I have like, before there was like the, this set was like an actuality, uh, I had it in a set to work with it and see how it worked. And there are some other colors there too that I'm working on. Um, but this set is by far the set I have used most, or the colours that I have used most. Um, I mean, the Jane set I have used a lot, don't get me wrong, I have refilled that palette a few times, it looks horrendous, but it's very well loved, but I feel like this, uh, this collection has, like, if I'm just going to paint something or put some down some color or stuff, I I reach for this palette and I really like that. Um, now, also to be said, I haven't used the um, the metallics as much as as I have been wanting to, though I think I mentioned this in the other video too that um, because most of the stuff I have painted so far, it, it, and especially when I've set down with the idea of using this palette has been to create something for for this collection. So for example here I'm, I'm painting the stamps when I've uh, painted the icons for the other sticker sheet uh, or the postcard. Those I've known to be scanned in and something that I'm going to continue working on in the, in the computer and using metallics it, it doesn't really have the same effect when it's painted in. Uh, or scanned in, sorry. So 
that is why I mostly use the four uh, quote-unquote traditional pigments but I just I, I just want to like raise my hand and like don't forget about them <laughs> uh, but on the card that you get with when you buy uh, the demo colors the I just want to like mention that the CD and the early like swatch or color representations they are not scanned in they are photographed and then put in because I couldn't get the scan to pick up the light shift that CD has. CD has like a pink peachy color and then turning into blue and the scanner was like what? So no. Uh, and the Erde was the same. We couldn't really get that uh, gold sparkle to get through so I had to photograph and put them in. Um, but I just want to mention because I the plan is to get these color swatches to look as real to life as possible and that is quite hard when you scan in colors um but I try my best but you know it is a representation it's not like uh, a clear one-to-one -one, like this is how it actually looks then I would ha like have to paint on it and I can't paint on it because it is not watercolor paper anyway I'm I'm staring off track right now here you can see the amazing mixture anyway with Harald and Albert I love that and the noise you can hear that is Uni, our little puppy. She is sleeping right at my feet because that's what she does. And uh, she has been out playing with the city uh, <laughs> this morning, so she is a bit tired now. And city she is sleeping on my sofa. Albert, he is sleeping out in the dog, in the kennel, I should say, uh, with Herman because in the kennel they have like dog beds and. Um, an armchair to sleep in. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> and if you want to know more about this setup I have with my studio and workshop and and the kennel everything, you can uh, check out my studio vlogs. <laughs> I think there are like 50, 50 plus studio vlogs. So I've uploaded, I think, every Saturday for almost a year. I think I missed one or something. Um, but I think that's pretty good. So if you're interested, um, in the in the life we have here out in the Swedish countryside um, then you can you can hop on over there and check it out we are, I am also right now rebuilding um, a, the space where I have my studio is an old stable so when I was little we had our horses here we don't have any horses now um, but now it's turned into a studio and as this sort of business of making paint grew quite quickly I have to say it was not planned and it took us all by surprise at least my parents they were very shocked <laughs> over how well it went um we decided to uh rebuild the rest of the old stable that was more like a storage uh into a workspace so that will become the new office slash workspace or workshop where I make paint so far I have started making paint out there and it's amazing which means I can make bigger batches. Uh, I have not been able to make it in office yet because I'm missing a desk but fingers crossed I'll get a worktop or a workbench like uh, soon. So that would be really fun um, and that will mean that the studio will be for painting uh, and I can't wait for that. Painting has definitely taken a backseat. Uh, it was a bit fun now in uh, June, July when I worked on this Dima collection to actually sit down and paint because otherwise painting is is not a priority. Um, and it's really, I mean, I started this whole thing because I love watercolor and I love painting and I wanted to try to make my own watercolor paints. Uh, that I couldn't find and make my own version of them and all of that and now um, I have sort of started a, a pretty successful business and I don't have time to paint and uh, I think I'm the one who has the most paint and I use them the least you know and I think that is very sad <laughs> um, but yeah so now I'm very very happy to get my studio back and hopefully get some more time to paint because that is what I love and uh, painting these stickers 
or the motifs that later turned into stickers, I, I had so much fun and I was so happy. And um, watching these, this footage back, I can like, I can see in my hands how, how happy I was, like how satisfied and how relaxed and I just enjoyed every minute of it and I'm, I'm very happy that I now have these stickers um, and I hope that you will like maybe not like look at them and like thinking oh Julia she had such happy hands when she was making this but you know like feel like it can bring you some joy too and um, yeah I mean I use them in my journal um, Especially the icon stickers, they are perfect now when we are sort of transitioning into the the colder part of the year. Um, and I actually, <laughs> okay, promise not to laugh, but I printed like four or five uh, stickers of the icons and I just put that into my planner. Yeah, because I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm really enjoying it and I'm really enjoying using my own stuff um, and that is something I've been like wanting to do for a long time so these stickers like the stamp stickers, the icon stickers, especially the weather stickers I did for the last update I made weather icon stickers with foil I'm using those a lot now I only gave myself like the the bad batch you know that hadn't been foiled quite properly um, but yeah, I use them like every day and now I'm very happy because I also have a new sheet of stickers that like the the standard stickers that I have, the sticker sheet is 8 by 11 but the one, the other one that I made now is 8 by 17 or something and it's just filled with like um, journaling, uh, journaling, um, what do you call it, like accessories? <laughs> I don't really know but you know binder clip push pins tapes and all of that are just illustrated uh, watercolored I love those so it looks like a vintage binder clip in your journal and um, yeah I might have printed out like three or or five maybe six uh, and I have those in my in my journal too I think they're really really fun so yeah, check those out if you're interested in, in journaling or having that kind of stuff. I've tried to paint them a bit more like vintage, rugged looking, a bit like they have rusted or yeah, you know, that kind of stuff and I'm very happy with them. Oh, anyway, <laughs> maybe you should go back to what I'm doing, yeah. So here you can see I, I laid down the the like the first wash and then let that dry and now I'm coming in but um I'm not coming in and I'm trying trying is the key word to not overwork it um I don't want it to be too much I still want the, like to be able to see like this is like to identify sort of the colors even though I have mixed them and I just try to add as much dimension as I can with as little as I can which is something I'm struggling with and the struggle is real. Um, I'm very happy with them and I'm very happy with the finished result and I feel like if I could try to do this a bit more often I would be even more happy. I don't know. I feel like I have a tendency to overwork and add too many layers um, but I'm really happy with how how this turned out. I feel like it has that sort of lightness and airiness that I was looking for, but still it has dimension and it has depth and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with that. And just letting the colors do the work. I feel like I am one that really wants to like nitpick and sort of be in too much and like push around and, uh, I sometimes forget I feel like that watercolor and the nature of this medium is that they are so beautiful on their own when you just let them be and I I think I've forgotten that I feel like I sometimes tend to use watercolor especially when I'm I'm drawing on a smaller scale like I have been doing now uh, with these stamps and the icons and everything I've been using them more like almost like color pencils you know 
I have too much control. I'm going in and nit nitpicking a bit too much. Um, and um, I feel like, especially here, when I've just laid down the wash and letting them sort of talk to each other and decide together what they're going to do without me interfering, it turns out really nicely. I mean, I really like this sort of... Um, here on the hair, you can see like from the left you get the sunlight with Ingrid and then on the on the right you have more like a shaded area with uh, with Olaf mixed with uh, Harald. And I really like, you really get this sense of light. Uh, also with the, um, with the candlesticks you get that sort of like the light coming through with the faint shadows under the candlesticks um, this sort of sense of sunrise with the tree just a very very faint yellowness and um, I'm very happy with that so yeah because I, I need to bear in mind that this was going to be in very small scale. I mean, I'm painting them quite small, but they were going to be even tinier once they turned into stickers. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I have rambled on quite enough. I'm going to peel off the tape. That is the best part. I'm not going to lie. That is the best part. And that is like the reason why I tape things down is so I can remove the tape later. Because that edge is just... Yeah, that edge. <laughs> um, but yeah, what I wanted to say with this video, really, is that I had a really good time painting these um, scenes or landscapes. Here you can see the finished product of all of them. Uh, I am very, very happy with them, even though I did spill some ink. But hey, better to spill ink than tea. And um, yeah. And also you can see here the finished sticker sheet that will be up in the shop and they're linked down below. If you're interested in this or the other sticker sheet, the other colors, links down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a really great day.